Hi, my name is Demetria Lucas. I'm a writer, author, and blogger, and you're watching The Virtual Classroom. I became interested in writing, I guess, when I was about 14 years old. I read Terry McMillan's Waiting to Exhale. It was my mother's copy laying around the house. I picked it up, I laid on the couch, and I read it all the way through in a seven hour stretch. And I knew I wanted to be a writer. The problem was, I'm from DC. Everyone either gets a government job or they go work for a law firm. That's what both of my parents were doing. And so I was sort of being shuttled um, down that to that profession. I went to college, I majored in English. I did want to be a writer, but I told my parents that I was going to go to law school. So everyone was good with that until senior year. One of my professors read a paper that I had written. She read it out loud in the class. And it was something I'd written maybe in three hours at 2 a.m. in the morning that was due you know, the following day. It was a paper on uh, the role of women in Richard Wright's native son. And she read the first paragraph and I was like, wow, that chick can really write. And then she got to the end of it and I was like, oh my God, that's me, that's me, that's me. And she called me after class and she said, what are you, what are you doing with your life? And I said, I'm going to law school. And she was like, no, you're meant to be a writer. So I started applying to schools, um, to graduate schools. I applied to NYU and Columbia because I knew I wanted to go to New York. Um, this is the hub if you want to be a writer, if you want to be a journalist. I applied to two schools. I didn't get into Columbia. I was like, oh my God, what have I done? I've gambled my whole life on you know, two schools. Luckily, I got into NYU. Um, I didn't have any clips because I never planned to be a writer. I sent in a paper I'd written on hip hop, 20 pages for an African American studies class. I faxed it over to Vibe because that's how long ago it was. And they called me two weeks later and asked me to be an intern. I went into the office, um, you know, in my suit. Everybody had on like, you know, jeans and sweatpants and hoodies. So I was all corporated out from DC. And they said, well, what department do you want to work in? And I said, uh, fashion or entertainment? And they say, well, fashion's full, so you'll do music. And I became a music journalist from there. Um, I did that for about six or seven years. Um, music was going through a weird transition. I didn't, I didn't want to talk about hip hop anymore. Like the music just wasn't the same. There were, there were good artists, but the majority of artists just didn't speak to me anymore. And so I wanted to write about something that was lasting and that I had a real interest in. And I went back to relation, excuse me, relationships. That's where my interest in writing started. Um, I started applying. Um, for different jobs in the relationship field, to be a relationship editor at different magazines, nobody was biting. So I started a blog because I needed to get my work out there. I needed to show them that I had an interest. I knew what I was talking about. So I started writing the blog on MySpace. It went from MySpace to HoneyMagazine.com in about six months. And then four months after it was on Honey, I landed as the relationship editor at Essence. Um, being at Essence, I ended up with a column in the magazine. Um, and maybe a year after that, um, I pitched Simon & Schuster to write my first book based on my blog, um, and they took it. I won't tell you what I make, but I remember being in grad school. My professor, um, he was the executive editor at ESPN at the time, and he asked us to write down on a piece of paper how much we thought he made as an executive editor. And so, you know, I wrote down something paltry because, you know, my parents were like, writing's a hobby, you don't get paid anything. Um, so I wrote down like 45,000 because I just thought, like, how much could you possibly make as a writer? And so we all passed it around and everyone had said something, you know, like insultingly bad. And he was like, I make $250,000. And so I was like, word? As a writer? So it's very possible. And there, the opportunities being a writer are endless. Like you can freelance, you can work a staff job, um, you can write a book, you can start a blog and make your money off advertising. You can write bios for you know music um, musicians that are coming out. That pays really well. You can write liner notes that pays extraordinarily well. Um, there are so, so, so many opportunities. Um, and especially if you can flip writing into book publishing, like I'm not making millions, but there are writers who, you know, make a few million a book. Terry McMillan is one of them. So that's the goal, get to where Terry is. Oh gosh, there's so much. My day begins early, somewhere around 7 a.m. I wake up and I check my form spring questions. I've answered probably 6,000 questions in less than a year. People write into me asking for relationship advice, career advice, life advice. So I get up, answer that for an hour, do the blah, 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 get to work. Um, 
Work can have very slow days where you know we're not closing the magazine and I'm just researching and interviewing experts trying to come up with story ideas or I could have a story due, I could have to run out into the street to interview 100 men or some random question that the Essence women want to know about what guys are thinking. Um, I may have to go to a photo shoot to, um, you know, to watch the single man of the month and help him get through his pictures. Um, I may have to sit down and brainstorm story ideas or upcoming issues um, for special issues for Essence. But usually when I leave work, I never go straight home. I end up going to speak on a panel or I go sit down to do an informational interview with someone who's in my field but far ahead of me in the game. I'm always looking for you know, tips and advice um, and for someone to help me on the path to get to the next step in my career. I also meet with young writers a lot. Um, when I was coming up, so many people looked out for me and so I feel obligated to do the same for a next generation of writers. Um, step one, don't be afraid to follow your dreams. A lot of people will tell you, you know, if, if you're doing anything creative, they'll say, that's a hobby. Like, you don't do that for a living. And you say, I want to do something that makes me happy. And they say, working is not supposed to make you happy. Working is supposed to pay the bills. But follow your dreams. Do what you love. Don't chase the money. Um, number two, don't be afraid to reach out to people in your field. Um, a lot of people are intimidated. They say like, oh, that's so-and-so, like she'll never talk to me. But so-and-so remembers being exactly where you were and she reached out to people to, to get ahead in her profession. So reach out to people, flatter them, you know, tell, do their, your background research, tell them, um, you know, I've read up on you, I'm very impressed and I want to learn how to do X. Number three, don't be afraid of hard work. Um, everyone who ever got anywhere put in a whole lot of hours. They grinded, they were humbled, they were borderline hazed to get to where they were. But I totally believe in Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule, which is if you wanna be the best at anything, you gotta put in hours upon hours upon hours and become an expert in your field. It doesn't always feel like it will pay off, it does. Uh, number four, I'd say be creative. There are a lot of people who are trying to get into the writing field right now. It seems very, very popular all of a sudden. Um, but get a blog and write your truth. People always say, I want to write about this, I want to write about that. You can really just write about your life because it's very unique to you and your outlook is very unique to you and that will separate you from the pack. And also, don't be afraid to look at what's out there and find where you fit in. Like, there are so many people out there who have relationship blogs right now. Relationships, I'm a single girl, I'm a black Carrie Bradshaw. It's overwhelming. So try to find some way to separate yourself from that. Number five, get an education. It is very important that you be trained in your field. Even people who are just naturally good writers or naturally good anything, you need the training and you need to know the history of what you're doing because you really just can't compete with the other people who haven't, who have the training, you just can't. Um, they have a huge, huge advantage. So for the people who say like, oh, I'm good at this, you know, no, you can be better at it. So go to school and get your education so you can be the best in your field. Gosh, uh, one of the best things that was ever told to me, the same professor that I mentioned earlier, he became my mentor. Um, and he told me that going along, you make money, um, you don't know what to do with it. Sometimes you just spend it on frivolous things. And he said, spend your money on experiences, not things. So if you have an opportunity to run off to Japan, you know, that's justifiable to put on a credit card. A Louis Vuitton bag is not. One of the things that I've learned that was very hard for me going forward was to be authentically myself. Sometimes starting out as a writer, you wanna mimic other people, you want to um, be like someone else because you're afraid to use your own voice or you're just not confident in who you are. But the sooner that you can accept this is what I do and it might be different from everyone else, but I have a niche and I have a lane, like you'll get so much further, so much faster. I do a lot of interviews, a lot of interviews with um, you know major and minor celebrities. And one of the things that I've noticed the difference between people who are really, really big versus people who are sort of like B-list, the professionalism. Um, I sent an email once to three different people. They were all doing the same thing. I asked them for a quick response. If they could turn it around in 24 hours, it was a two sentence answer to a question. The person who was the biggest out of all of them, he hit me back immediately from his personal account. He offered his cell phone and said, if you need anything else, give me a call. The other two people who have really, been in the game much longer than him and are really trying to get to where he is, one of them, her publicist hit me back and she said, oh, so-and-so won't be available until you know, a couple days from now. Um, is it possible for us to you know, send something then? Not really, because it's due now. 
Um, and then the other person, they said, well, she's going to be on this photo shoot and maybe you can go to this photo shoot and interview her there. Are you kidding me? It's, it's a two minute, a, a two second response. It was two sentences. Like type it into your Blackberry and send it. But just sort of the level of professionalism and just going above and beyond, that's how you get to the top and that's also how you stay there. My name is Demetria Lucas. I'm a writer, author, and blogger, and you are watching The Virtual Classroom. Is this thing on?